it was actually a lawsuit filed against the letter we wrote, you know, the six page letter. So you can read yeah. that six page letter yourself. Was that, was that, cause I just read it on Twitter. Was that like real at all? Like, was that like a real, like actual like lawsuit that you guys got hit with? Yeah, we're, we're in the middle of it now. We have, um, you know, I think it's a frivolous lawsuit. Um, it was actually a lawsuit filed against the letter we wrote, you know, the six page letter. So you can read yeah. that six page letter yourself and, yeah. um, you know, come to your own conclusion on whether we'd be liable for anything under this letter mm -hmm. that we sent to Deloitte, you know, pointing out issues we see with the company's accounting and then encouraging them to take their audits seriously. I don't know where the liability in, in such a letter, you know, comes. So I think it's a frivolous lawsuit, um, but we have, you know, we're going through the court process and we follow motions. And I think uh, right now it's a bit of a waiting game. Um, the, the ball is in the, the judge's court. Um, and, you know, they'll review it. Some of these systems are, are slow, but yeah, it was real. And I'd, I'd never seen a class action lawsuit against a short activist. Me before. either. Me yeah. either. That's why I thought it was made up. I thought that it was like <laughs> completely made up. So then when I saw you, that, well, when I heard that we could have you on, I was like, damn, I got to ask him about this. <laughs> yeah, about you know, it. when I saw it too, I hadn't been served yet. So I'm like, <laughs> this is new. I think I got served like a week later, so. Interesting. So as, as a trader or investor, like we know that using confidence and having confidence in your own ideas is so important. When you get hit with like negative reaction from the companies that you're, you're suing or people that are companies that you're shorting or investors in that company that are, that are upset, you know, does that ever, is that hard for you to then maintain the course and like get like, keep going on your idea or do you ever get like stressed out or frustrated by the reaction you receive? I don't think so. I, no. uh, yeah, I've just been doing this for a long time and, um, it's been a lot of negative comments. Yeah. Me, uh, personally about my fund, you know, so I think we get a lot of angry voicemails, um, <laughs> emails, uh, I've gotten Facebook yeah. messages, I've got Facebook DMs. <laughs> Uh, from upset investors. So, you know, I've pretty much seen it all. Uh, I don't know if it really, um, you know, impacts my conviction. But we, uh, just on the fundamentals, uh, you know, we're, we're interested in hearing what, what others have to say. And, um, you know, a lot of people just like call me names, but uh, people who post on Twitter, you know, genuine counter arguments, um, you, you know, we look at those and, um, you know, if we, if we, if it changes our mind, well, we usually don't sort of like, you know, write about how it impacts our thinking. We just sort of let the original report just sort of stand on its own. Um, but, you know, we can close a position out if, if we feel that we're wrong, but that happens very rarely. Um, you know, I think most of the time when we get trades wrong, it's because of stuff that happens with the market, you know, like Carvana, for instance, that stock Carvana and AI, I think those stocks ultimately doubled a month or two after publication. At this point, I think um, AI has retraced all the way back down, but Carvana is on its way down. Um, but, you know, I think we're right about our original thesis, uh, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll look at what people have to say. And and sometimes respond to it, but usually just sort of like use it um, to sharpen our own thinking on, on the stock and our.